Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Friday, the 14th, September 14th. This month is flying by. Um, so I wanted to do a video um, a little bit about me, who I am, and a little history of me. Um, a big thing that I have struggled in my life is anxiety and some depression um, that I've struggled with most of my life. Um, and I know it stems from um, a lot of my past and growing up and my childhood. Um, and I thought that it was time to kind of make a video and open up about kind of who I am um, and let you guys see that I'm a real person, I have my real issues and things that I am working on, overcoming my challenges that I face every day. I am not, you know, your perfect girl that, you know, I know on social media and on YouTube and videos, it can seem, it, you can come off as, you know, I got this perfect life, I got these beautiful, perfect children, this perfect husband, life is great, but I am a human being, I'm not perfect, and I have struggles and challenges that I face every day, and I wanted to talk to you guys about one of those. Um, so for those of you who are new to my channel or just returning, welcome. Thank you for um, tuning in. Um, my name is Rebecca Walters. I am 28 years old. Almost, I'll be 29 in March. Um, I have two little girls, Haley and Nora. Um, Haley's five, Nora is three. Haley just started kindergarten this week and Nora just started preschool this week. So it's been um, a challenging week for us, emotional week for us. Um, and that's probably what got me thinking about this video, <laughs> doing this video, because it was an intense week. Um, I've been married for seven years to my wonderful husband, um, Jonathan. He is a, um, director of farming up at Brassfield Estate Winery in Clear Lake Oaks, where we live. Um, I am a waitress and, um, I work at my mother's restaurant in the town where we live, Judy's Junction. If you haven't been there and you're a local, definitely go. It's the best breakfast ever. It's like diner style, breakfast, lunch. Um, so I work there with her. Um, and I also coach soccer. I run marathons. Um, I just started a mom's group, um, which I am loving. So if you are local and you're interested, if you have little kids like me, um, and you want to join my mom's group, we like get together twice a month. We go to girls night, girls night out. We have play dates, um, and we just kind of support each other and love on each other. If you're interested in that, uh, let me know and we can get you in my mom's group. So I have a lot going on in my life and I love it. I love being busy. I love being a soccer mom. I love, you know, my girls are both in dance. I love, love it all. The old me would never have been able to handle what I handled today. I would never have been able to juggle as much as I juggle today um, because of anxiety and depression. Um, so to go back, you know, back in time, to rewind kind of into my childhood, um, I, you know, my mom was a single mom growing up and she worked like three jobs to provide for her four kids and she also went to school at night. She was very busy. Um, and I have the best childhood, like the best childhood memories, um, the best mom in the world. And, um, but when I was a baby, my mom was going through a hard time and, um, she did the best thing that she knew she could do for her kids and, um. I went into foster care when I was about a year old with my brother. Um, I think we stayed in the same place, but I wasn't there in there long. Um, I think not even a year I was in, stayed in a foster home. And I went with this family that was, from what I've heard, is a wonderful family. Um, just from stories that I've heard. Um, but I was in foster care for a part of my infancy. Um, I also went and lived with my aunt for a part of my infancy about when I was a year old. Um, a lot of these things I don't really remember, but from stories and what my mom has told me and, um, you know, I 
bounced around a little when I was a baby. Um, and I mean, I had a great childhood. The people I were with and stayed with were amazing. Um, but I, you know, things that happened in my infancy and in my childhood definitely have affected me in my adult life. Um, I also, um, I've never met my father. Um, my mom, I've tried to find out things about him from my family and my mom, but she also doesn't know a lot about him. Um, a couple things, um, we don't, I don't even know his name, where he lives, anything about him. Not that I really, it really matters, not that I like really care because I've been fine and my mom has been amazing at raising her kids by herself and not that I really feel like I need a father. Um, you know, you can't help but wonder and be curious of what that half of you is. I mean, you know, you were created by a mom and a dad, you know, and so you're curious of what your father is like and where maybe what traits and stuff that you got from him that you didn't get. Anyway, um, so you can't help but be curious and I've, you know, I've asked questions and stuff and she's told me as much as she can, but um, I'm not really interested at this point trying to dig deep and find out who he is. I don't even know if he's alive. Um, it just, I don't want to complicate my life and I have kids now and I just, I feel like it's best just to, you know, let it go. Um, but I know all of these things that have happened in my childhood and in my infancy have affected my adult life, you know, not having a father, not knowing my father, um, being, you know, bounced around as a baby from home to home. Um, you know, once I was three years old, things really stabilized. My mom, um, was getting back on her feet and we moved into a house, um, and things were stable. Things were good. My mom had, you know, some friends who were, played a significant role in my life, kind of as a father figure, um, who were amazing. Um, she had a lot of support. Um... I had a lot of great friends, school was great, I had, most importantly, a great foundation in church and um, um, my mom made sure that we went to church every Sunday no matter what, even though she was working, we always went and I know that church and my foundation have really saved me um, growing up and still today. So. Anyway, the point of this video is I wanted to talk to you guys about um, my anxiety and my depression. Um, I kind of started having issues a little in high school, but most most of them happened after graduation. Um, I always was very clingy growing up as a child. I always was very nervous, shy, you know, anxious. I didn't want to leave my mom. I was just kind of very um, cautious of things. I was a worry war, I guess you could say. Um, and it, that's just followed me throughout life. Um, in high school, I would always get so stressed over the littlest things about homework, about what I should wear. I mean, you name it, I was always stressed out. I was always anxious about things. I always wanted to do my best and be the best. And in sports, I was just a nervous wreck all the time. And it was challenging. I mean, I mean, it's, it's exhausting. Um, when you have that to, you know, you can't fall asleep at night because you're thinking about your homework that you have to turn in the next day and stuff like that. It, it takes a toll on you. And, you know, my mom was really helpful. I would read a lot of um, self-help books, encouraging books, inspirational books. Um, church helped a lot, praying, journaling, that all helped. But it seemed like it was getting worse and worse. As I was getting older and, and um, more responsibilities came on my plate and I started growing up and becoming more independent or having to become more independent, um, I moved to Kansas after high school. I wanted to get out of Lake County. I wanted to move away. I was just ready to move on. Um, so I, straight out of high school, I moved to Kansas, um, went to Washburn University for a semester 
and I became very depressed in Kansas and very homesick. It wasn't the place for me, um, and my depression really was bad. My anxiety was really bad, and I know it's because I was away from home, I was away from my family, and things started to get bad then. Um, so I ended up moving back home. My mom drove to, drove to, or flew to Kansas, and we drove back home. Um, it was quite a journey, but I made it back to California, and then I started working at my mom's restaurant again, and um, I met my husband when I moved back home at the restaurant, he came in and uh, met him there. Um, we started dating and life was great. Like, I felt like um, things were just really good. Um, you know, I was working, I was going back to school in California at a community college. I was, I created my own baking company, um, you know, met this great guy and things were really, really good. Um, my anxiety was low. I felt, I felt, you know, like, great. I felt on top of the world. Life was good. Um, and so me and my husband fell in love and about six months after, was it, maybe it was closer to a year after dating, I think, um, he proposed on my 21st birthday and I said yes, of course, and we were married six months later. So I was married when I was 21. Um, and life was just absolutely amazing. We lived in this little tiny 800 square foot house on, um, he managed a vineyard. Um, and that's the reason he's from Texas. He moved to California because of, uh, wine and vineyards. That's his, his, um, degree is in that. So he was living on this vineyard, um, in this little tiny 800 square foot house. So I moved in there with him. Very small. We had just the two of us in our chocolate lab. And we had our 80 acre vineyard. It was beautiful. Um, so he got to go out to work um, every morning in the vineyard and I would go to the restaurant which was like right down the street and everything was great. Life was amazing. Um, we were in love, you know. Um, we had our puppy. Everything was perfect. Then I started to get very bad anxiety. Um, I started noticing um, whenever my husband would leave for work or even go to the store, I was an anxious wreck, a nervous wreck. I would not be able to function until he was back home. Um, when he went to work, I would just be anxious all day until he came home. I would always be scared that something bad was going to happen, that um, he wasn't going to come home, um, really, really negative thoughts. Um, and I wouldn't, I found myself not being able to do the things I love to function because my anxiety and my fears were so out of control. This slowly started, st started after we got married, it just started to become worse and worse. I, be I was becoming more clingy. I was becoming, you know, um, if, if, you know, Jonathan was a manager, so if an emergency came up and he had to take one of his workers to the hospital or something like that, it would set me off so bad. I would be to the point of, you know, crying so hard that I'm hyperventilating because I'm so anxious about him leaving um, at night, um, being alone. It was really bad. So I decided to start seeing, um, you know, go to a therapist and talk to someone once it started to become, um, you know, a little out of control to where I knew this, you know, wasn't something that I could live with. This wasn't something normal that something needed to change because it was affecting my marriage. Um, my husband, you know, he couldn't handle it. Um, me always being, you know, wanting to know where he was, always calling him every five minutes. Um, it was not healthy at all. So I went and saw a therapist and I started seeing a therapist like a couple times a month, I think. And um, she was amazing. Um, it really helped, it, it really did help, but I was still anxious. She gave me some tools that I could use to help calm me down or, um, you know, she mentioned journaling, praying, um, you know, self-talk, talking to yourself to calm you down, all these little, you know, steps that you do 
And yeah, I mean, those are all great and those I'm sure work for a lot of people. And I had tried everything in the book. I mean, when I started feeling anxious, I would try to calm myself down. I would try to think of something else to write um, everything. You know, they said I tried. Um, I tried everything in the book to not be anxious. And it, it was kind of like a Band-Aid, but my cut was just getting worse and worse underneath. And... Um, my anxiety was still bad. Um, I would become depressed um, when my husband had to go out of town. I mean, don't even go there because, I mean, it was just, I couldn't even be me. I couldn't even do the things I loved. Um, and then we got pregnant um, with Haley and the whole pregnancy, the beginning of the pregnancy was really good. But towards the end of the pregnancy, my emotions and my anxiety and depression were out of this world. It was the hardest few months of my life. And I, I, I mean, it's hard to think of words to describe what I felt during the end of my pregnancy with Haley. Um, and once Haley was born, I found my anxiety getting even worse because now I didn't only have my husband to be anxious about. I had a little girl that I was had no idea how to take care of. I was a new mom and you know sleep deprived and um, scared out of my mind. So after having Haley, I knew I needed to go see someone else and I needed to get um, my anxiety under control. Um, so I went back to a therapist and um, a different therapist and they diagnosed me with separation anxiety um, based on what I would tell them how my anxiety was and what um, <laughs> spiked it and what made it worse. Um, they diagnosed me with separation anxiety and it makes perfect sense. Um, the reason they said that I have separation anxiety is from my childhood. Um, I was in foster care. I w lived with different people. Every time I would get attached to someone, they would be taken away from me. I was attached to my mom from birth. She was taken away from me. I went into a foster home and got attached to the people there, and then they were taken away from me. I went and lived with my aunt and got attached there, and then they were taken away from me. My father was never there. I never was able to be attached to my father. And I would see my friends and other people be attached to their father, and I didn't have that. All these things made it really hard to get attached to someone without feeling afraid that you were going to lose them. Um, so when I got married and got attached to my husband, my anxiety rose because I was afraid that something was going to happen or I was almost expecting to be separated from him for something bad to happen or him to be taken away. Um, and the same thing with my daughter. So every time I would get attached to someone, my anxiety would be worse. Um, they said that, you know, although you can, it you know, it would take time and a lot of hard work to start overcoming this anxiety and you know it's a lot of going back in your past and letting go of things, forgiving, um, closing doors in your past which is very 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 hard and a lot of things that can happen to you when you're a baby or when things that you can't even remember because you were too little it still makes such an impact on your mind and in your, you know, you growing up. I am 28 years old and I still have issues with anxiety. And um, so they eventually put me on a medication. Um, it got to the point where I didn't want to live like this anymore. I wanted, you know, they have so many medications out there and, you know, I am the type of person that likes to do things all natural. I don't like taking a lot of medicine. Um, but... I finally realized that I need a little more help. It's not fair to my family for it to have, you know, they need their mom, they need their wife. So I got um, prescribed um, Zoloft, I think was the first medication I went on and it didn't seem to help. 
Um, I didn't like how I felt on it. Um, then I was prescribed another medication. I can't think of the name, but it also didn't really help and I didn't like how I felt on that. So finally, a couple years ago, after having my second child, Nora, and my anxiety, of course, rose because I couldn't, I wasn't on medication. Um, um, after having Nora, my anxiety got worse. Um, so my, my doctor finally put me on a medication called Lexapro um, or Escitalopram Oxalate. Anyway, um, like 10 milligrams. Um, they had me try that after my second child and it has saved my life. Um, Lexapro, I have been taking for probably almost, yeah, two years now. Um, I take only 10 milligrams a day and it has helped me overcome my anxiety. When I take Lexapro, um, I don't feel anxious at all. I don't feel anxiety. I don't feel worry. I don't feel fear. Sorry guys, my camera shut off on me. Um, anyway, where I left off, uh, I was diagnosed with separation anxiety. I finally was prescribed Lexapro. Um, it has saved my life. Um, I know medication isn't for everyone, but if you struggle like with anxiety like I do, and um, it's more of your brain isn't wired correctly, it's actually a condition um, that you can't fix on your own, and this stuff helps kind of rewire my brain so that um, my mood is correct, and it's saved my life. Um, everything, my relationship, my family has dramatically improved um, and I'm thankful for Lexapro. Um, so anyway, if you struggle with anxiety and you're not sure what to do about it, um, feel free to reach out to me, um, comment below or you know, send me a message and I would love to talk to you um, about what I've gone through and what's helped me because um, I know it's not something to mess with. Anxiety can really ruin your life and it's it, you don't deserve to live like that and to struggle with it. Um, so please reach out if you want, um, if you um, have any questions. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate your guys' support and um, also please subscribe for more videos and um, thank you guys for listening to me and watching and um, hearing me rant on and on. So anyway, all right, I'll talk to you guys soon and I hope you have a great day.